This morning on CBS 2 News, a stabbing victim is speaking out why she's warning others to be alert. Plus, a federal judge set to deliver a verdict on one of Idaho's abortion bans. How soon we'll know whether or not it'll go into effect. Plus, the Four Corners fire continuing to burn. What you may see more of across the sky today as crews battle the blaze. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise on this Tuesday. It's August 23rd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson and it is feeling a little bit cooler out there as you're stepping out the door this morning. You may note that it's a good 10 degrees cooler than what we experienced yesterday. And Marcos, I'm hoping it's because you brought winds of change your way. Good morning. <laughs> And good morning, Sarah. That's right. We're going to uh, start to see a cool down this week after we did break that 2003 uh, record high uh, triple digit highs for I think it was about 22 days. But um, before we see that cool down happen this week, we are I should mention we are going to stay above um, above normal for what's considered normal for this time of year. But here's a look right now, 70 degrees. So it is a cooler, a little cooler out there as you start your day. I'm going to show you some of these temperatures across the valley right now. 64 there, Caldwell, 77 there, Ontario and Idaho City there, uh, about 50 degrees. Now, as I mentioned, that normal for this time, 89, we're going to be staying around mid 90s to the upper 90s over the next couple of days, folks. So for some context here, 98 there, Boise, 97 there, Nampa, 97 out in Caldwell and Ontario there at 99 degrees. So a little cool down from those triple digit highs, but still warmer than normal, Sarah. No, thank you, Marcos. Yeah, excited for some cooler weather heading our way. It is 501 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking out there this morning, everything seems to be looking good. Nothing to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. 20 year old Wyatt Cunningham will now spend 15 years in prison for stabbing a woman multiple times. Now, even though the trial is over, the woman who was stabbed, she sat down with CBS 2's Michaela Elich to warn others. She said what happened to her can happen to anyone. And that's when I saw the bloody knife and I realized that it was a very serious situation. It all started with a Snapchat message from her friend's husband asking Bailey to help him Christmas shop for his wife. Of course, I've said yes. I've more than welcome to help out with people. And I had to go pick them up because they only have one vehicle and she was using that one. When Bailey arrived at the house, he invited her to see the nursery for their expected baby. And things took a turn for the worst. And I walked in the house, left my keys in my car, my purse in my car, window down, not locked, just wasn't gonna be there very long and talked in there for maybe five minutes and as I was turning around he stabbed me. Wyatt Cunningham stabbed Bailey once in the shoulder, the head and the knee. I started to defend myself screaming, hitting, kicking and he tried to cut my throat. I blocked with one, one arm, grabbed the blade with my other hand. All the more shocking because Bailey didn't really know Cunningham. They'd only met through Jordan, her friend and his wife. I say congratulations to him at their wedding, but that was my first time meeting him, ever talking to him, and that's all I ever said to him. What's more, from court documents, he never gave a reason for stabbing her. Cunningham said he, quote, had no reason to be mad at Bailey or stab her, and that it didn't feel real. It was hard for me to understand that that, that happened to me and why that happened to me. Still don't know why that would happen to me, but... But it was real. On August 17th, Cunningham was sentenced to 15 years, eight years fixed. I definitely do feel like he needed a little more time, but the eight years is fine with me. While Cunningham is now serving his sentence, in a way, Bailey is serving one too. She lives with scars that will forever be a reminder of that day. It doesn't just all go away with uh, all the trauma that happened, but it is a little bit of a relief. Switching gears, a 46-year-old man's body now found in Lucky Peak Reservoir just weeks after he went under the water. Now, the Ada County Sheriff not saying who he is, except that he went swimming back on July 31st. Now, the coroner will likely identify who it is sometime later this week. 
Turning to developing news, a key week ahead in the fight over one of Idaho's new abortion laws. Now, the law triggered by the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade is set to affect go into effect this Thursday. Now we'll know as soon as tomorrow if a federal judge will stop it. The DOJ is suing Idaho, claiming its near total ban on abortion violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Now during yesterday's argument, Idaho Deputy Attorney General Brian Church, he was questioned about whether ectopic pregnancies are included in the state's definition of a pregnancy. That's as written by the abortion ban law. Now Church said, quote, I am bound by what the legislature has wrote. Now that means an affirmative that doctors or nurses who treat an ectopic pregnancy, which always involves using medication or surgery to remove the embryo, hopefully before other organs are damaged, could face criminal charges if a prosecutor does decide to file them. And you will recall most abortions in Idaho already illegal. The Idaho Supreme Court said it would not put a pause on a different law, allowing relatives to sue abortion providers. Now that one took effect back on August 12th. Now, last Friday, another abortion ban went into effect. It's the so-called heartbeat law. That's the one that allows exceptions for medical emergencies or in cases of rape or incest. Well, turning this morning to fire season, we're getting a closer eye on the Four Corners fire that's burning near Cascade. You'll notice some more smoke moving in and out today. That's because it's more than 7,900 acres sitting at 11% containment. This is video from just yesterday. Now over the weekend, firefighters, they cleared trees and vegetation, helping cut a fire line and install pumps and hoses near homes on the western edge of Lake Cascade. Now this will help protect homes if the fire gets too close. In the meantime, people living in God's Acres and French Creek do remain evacuated. You can see the full list of closures in the area. Just head to our website. And a brush fire in southeast of southeast of Boise along Interstate 84 is contained as of this morning. Now the double tap fire, it was out near Simcoe Road and at last check had burned about 200 acres. Now the Bureau of Land Management crews are working with the fire with the help of air tankers. The Ada County Sheriff's Office reported a vehicle caught fire and that quickly spread to nearby brush. Now a caution to drivers on I-84 eastbound. They could see delays early this morning as crews are mopping up. Well, happening today, Idaho's largest school district returning to the classroom today. Now, the West Ada School District set to begin their new school year. And new this year, the district is offering full day of kindergarten. You can find more information on that. Just head on over to our website, IdahoNews.com. Yeah, kids are headed back to school. I think that's just about everyone now. I think we still have base and no basins back today as well. Yeah. So yeah, all the kiddos heading back to school. What can they expect as they're heading out the door this morning? Yeah, nice, uh, nice mild conditions this morning, Sarah. Um, I did mention that a cool down we are going to be seeing this week, right? Which is uh, just in time for that first week of school for many. But here's that out the door forecast this morning or uh, that bus stop forecast uh, getting into the 70s there by 9 a.m. 80s there by 11 and we are going to be getting into the 90s the mid 90s by today now we're still considered a little bit warm for this time of year i'm going to go ahead and show you some of our current temperatures right now 66 there nampa 64 Caldwell, 69 there Meridian, and CUNA there at 61. So nice uh, 60s uh, throughout the state, uh, throughout the region as you get those kids ready for school. 65 there, Glens Ferry. Now, taking a look at this temperature trend, we are going to be seeing um, those temperatures kind of get cool throughout the week as the week goes on. By Thursday, we may see some of that monsoonal moisture come through the central part of our region, and we are going to see that cool down 88 there Saturday. And looking at some low temperatures tonight, 50s for the Sun Valley area, 39 there for Stanley, and 65 there for Boise. Now, going to touch a little bit on the smoke forecast. We are going to be seeing some hazy conditions, especially in the mountain region, but those are going to be clearing out by today. And then as the week continues, we are going to see that uh, haze, those hazy conditions clear out as well as we see some of that monsoonal moisture come through the area. But um, overall, cool down this week. However, still warmer than normal, Sarah. No, thank you, Marcos. It is 509 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. A few more headlights, but everything very quiet out there for this AM. Hope you all are having a good start to your morning. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates.
the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic coming up soon. Now that kicks off next Wednesday, August 31st. It starts on Wednesday, which is uh, Cap Egg Kids Day. And what they do that morning is the balloons actually don't leave Ann Morrison Park. Instead, the kids get to jump in the baskets and go on a tethered balloon ride. with. Now the first day, always fun as we get to see those kids go up in balloons, of course, safely tethered to the ground. And for Light 1079's morning show host, Michelle Hart, the spirit of Boise, all about celebrating what's so great about our community. It's something that just brings joy to the entire community. Like how could you be sad or unhappy when you're looking at these huge, colorful hot air balloons? Yeah, no, that is not a bad sight. And speaking of which, lots of different balloons over 50 expected to take flight. This year, there's a tagger coming, there's a sloth, there's a rocket. Um, so it's not just the regular dome balloons that you're used to seeing. CBS2, CapEd Credit Union, and Town Square Media, we all look forward to seeing you at Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Labor Day weekend. Now, we'll provide you exclusive live coverage of the event. You can watch it on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. Well, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, lawyers for the former president asking for more time as the FBI reviews documents taken from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. And later, staying safe on Idaho roads, what to know if you're planning to ride your bike here in the Gem State. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Despite the economy, spending on this continues to climb every year. Now, last year, we spent $109.6 billion on it. That answer, our pets. Yep, our fur babies. As soon as I have one at home, that's where all my money goes. All right, now for today's question. 30% of people have gone here on a first date. Where is it? Here's a look at your local forecast out in Burns, Oregon today. Sunny conditions with a high of 92 tonight. Uh, clear conditions, low of 54 and tomorrow a high of 93 with that sunshine sticking around. Thank you, Marcos. Lawyers for former President Trump are asking for a timeout in the FBI's review of documents recovered from his Florida estate. That is until a neutral third party would be appointed to help inspect those records. Now this comes as the New York Times reports that the government has recovered more than 300 documents marked as classified from the estate since Trump left office. Now CBS News's correspondent Bradley Blackburn has the latest from New York. In a new court filing, lawyers for former President Donald Trump are asking a judge to block the FBI from looking at the materials seized in the Mar-a-Lago search until a neutral third party can be appointed to oversee the review. The so-called special master the Trump legal team is calling for would take on the responsibility of setting aside documents covered by executive privilege. We're going to come out swinging and say, look, you know, this cannot be something where we just get a... Uh, that kind of a wink and a nod from DOJ that we're supposed to trust them. Monday's maneuver is part of a federal lawsuit filed by the former president's legal team in response to the hours-long search of his Palm Beach estate two weeks ago. It could give him a little more comfort. It could keep his side of things in the news. So I think in terms of the rhetoric around it, the politics behind it, it might help Donald Trump. The day of the search, agents seized boxes, including 11 sets of classified documents, some marked top secret. This all comes as the Justice Department faces a Thursday deadline to submit a redacted version of the affidavit that led to the search warrant. They have to go through it not only sentence by sentence and paragraph by paragraph, but word by word. Because every redaction they make, if they don't redact completely, it's going to lead people to speculate. The Justice Department opposes the release of the affidavit, saying it could compromise the investigation. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Now, the motion that former President Trump's legal team filed on Monday, it also includes a claim that he's the front runner for the 2024 Republican nomination. And that highlights how politics is making its way into the ongoing investigation surrounding former President Trump. Well, switching gears, California's governor rejecting a plan to set up legal drug injection sites in the state. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom vetoed a bill that would allow L.A., Oakland and San Francisco to open sites where opioid users could legally inject drugs under supervision. Now, Newsom says it could have brought a, quote, a world of unintended consequences. In the meantime, bill supporters say it would help to prevent overdose deaths 
In the meantime, opponents say it would condone drug use. Well, looking ahead, Idaho has an upcoming election. It's on August 30th, as several school districts will have bonds and levies on the ballot. Early voting does end as of this Friday. The deadline to request an absentee ballot, that has already passed. So if you didn't get one, you'll need to vote in person. And if you did apply for an absentee ballot, remember, you have to have it turned in by 8 o'clock p.m. on Election Day. Again, that is August 30th. All right, well, I'm looking forward to a little bit of a cool down. I, I mentioned this this morning when we came in because obviously we come in pretty early in the morning, but stepping outside when I was letting my dog out, I noticed that it's just a little bit cooler out there and I had this excitement inside of me, um, Marcos. It is feeling good out there this morning. Now, yesterday it was about 80 degrees as yeah. we were stepping out the door. Luckily today, looking more in that 70 degree range. So hoping that at least cooler winds moving on in. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely a lot cooler this morning. I, I noticed that too as I stepped out the door to come into nice, work. Refreshing. Um, yeah, after those uh, triple digit highs we saw last week, I think we uh, definitely need a little cool down in store. But that's right. Here's a look at that current uh, temperature right now. 70 degrees southeast winds there, 11 miles an hour. Uh, feels like 70 degrees there, so a little calm, nice, mild start to your morning. If you're getting the kids ready for school, you're getting your day started. Here's a look at some of those current temperatures. Uh, Mid 60s there, 64 there, Caldwell, 64 Nampa, and then uh, 69 there out in Meridian. So nice, uh, uh, clear, nice, mild conditions across the board there. 63 there, Mountain Home, and 66 out there in Glens Ferry. Now, I'm going to be staying fair, mostly dry for the week. We are going to see some of that monsoonal moisture come through the area around uh, the Malheur County area and the central part of the state around midweek. That's going to cause some of us uh, some of the area to cool down just a little bit. However, we are still considered warmer than normal for this time of year. Here's a look at some of our highs for today. For instance, 98 there Boise, 97 there Nampa, 97 there in Mountain Home. But what we could expect a slight cool down this week. Some of that mountain haze warmer than normal still but moisture midweek causing some of that cool down to happen. Here's a look at that extended forecast sunny throughout the week 96 there Tuesday 99 Wednesday 96 Thursday and then we start to see that cool down by Friday afternoon 93 88 86 before we get back into that sunny uh, low 90s by next week Sarah. Love that. Thank you, Marcos. It is 519 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything rolling on along. Do keep in mind that eastbound near Simcoe Road, we did have the double tap fire late last night. We may still see some crews mopping up this morning, so just give yourself an extra couple minutes if you are heading eastbound out that way. But other than that, the main corridor is looking good this morning, so when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And before we go, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello, Idaho. Corporal Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday. You know, I've talked a little bit before about red lights and stop signs for vehicles. Well, I want to take a minute to talk about red lights and stop signs for bicycles because the rules apply a little bit differently on bikes than they do for vehicles on the roadway. So what does it mean for bikes? Well, ultimately, a stop sign for a bicyclist is the same or should be treated the same as a yield sign for a vehicle. So that means as a bicyclist comes up to an intersection and they see that stop sign there, they're required to slow down and then yield to any cross traffic on the road, but they are not required to stop. Now a red light is a little bit different for a bicyclist. It's actually treated like a stop sign would be for a vehicle. So a bicyclist is required to stop at a red light and then if the intersection is clear, they can go ahead and proceed through a red light after coming to a complete stop. Now, the same rule would apply as far as we want you as a bicyclist to get to where you're going safely. That means you do have to yield, whether it's through a stop sign or a red light, to any vehicles on the road that can legally go the opposite direction. So make sure it's clear whether you're just slowing down through a stop sign or you're stopping and proceeding through a red light. Make sure that roadway is clear for you to go ahead and proceed so you can get to where you're going safely. And as drivers, be sure we're watching out for those bicycles as well as cars on the road. So hopefully that helps with Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. Buckle up, buckaroo. Buckle up, buckaroos. Still to come on CBS2 News this morning, how your diet may help you deal with the impacts 
of long COVID. Plus, the Western Idaho Fair is on the special deal today that may help you get your hands on some of that iconic fair food. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. A new study shows your diet may have make a difference in whether or not you struggle with lingering symptoms of coronavirus. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains why. Hey there, everybody. While no one diet can prevent or treat any viral complication, new research does show one eating plan may work against some of the common problems associated with COVID-19 complications. That diet is the Mediterranean diet. It appears it may reduce the risk of developing lingering symptoms of COVID-19, even though providers acknowledge we aren't sure yet how to treat this collection of symptoms known as long COVID syndrome. Sometimes because we, we don't have great treatments, the most important thing that, that I provide is a follow-up appointment. We'll see you in two weeks. Um, we'll see how you're doing. The Mediterranean diet generally includes more plant-based proteins, such as nuts and beans or legumes, olive oil as the primary source of fat, lots of fruits and vegetables, and dairy foods, eggs, chicken, and fish in moderate amounts. Researchers speculate it may work against long COVID in this new study, not yet peer-reviewed or published, because eating this way works against high cholesterol or patterns of blood fats associated with long COVID and also heart disease. It may also be because the diet works like a statin in the body, a drug already known to alter levels of fat and cholesterol in the body. Best way to start this eating plan, try just one meatless meal a week. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Pfizer submitting an update, updated COVID-19 vaccine for regulatory approval. The company says the shots have been revised to specifically target new strains of the Omicron variant. The FDA hopes to approve the new vaccine before winter, just in time for a booster dose campaign. Still to come on CBS2 News, more kids headed back to the classroom today. What's new for Idaho's largest school district? And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. After a three-hour block of FBI, every flavor you'd like, you can join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. 30% of people have gone here on a first date. All right, folks, where do you think it is? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, a stabbing victim is speaking out why she's warning others to be alert. Plus, a federal judge set to deliver a verdict on one of Idaho's abortion bans. How soon we'll know whether or not it will go into effect. Plus, the Four Corners fire continuing to burn. What you may see more of across the skies today as crews battle the blaze. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. And good morning, folks. As you start your Tuesday morning, 70 degrees this morning, a nice mild start to your day, a little cooler than the temperatures we've been seeing uh, the past couple days. Here's a look at some temperatures right now across the valley there. 64 Caldwell, Ontario there, 77 uh, Mountain Home there, 65 and Baker City, 58 degrees. Now we are going to see a slight cool down this week and we are going to be getting a break from those triple digit highs we've been seeing over the past uh the past week here's a normal look at what to um normal high for this time of year now looking at our highs for today 97 there nampa 97 mountain home and 98 out in boise so about what we could expect this week is a slight cool down uh, of course, that mountain haze sticking around warmer than normal conditions still, and we may see some moisture heading our way midweek. Sarah. No, oh, thank you, Marcos. 
It is 531 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Everything is looking good. Hey, good morning out there. Hope you all are having a good start and everything is rolling smoothly if you're heading into the office this morning. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. 20 year old Wyatt Cunningham. He'll spend 15 years in prison for stabbing a woman multiple times. Now, even though this trial is over, that woman who was stabbed, she sat down with CBS 2's Michaela Elich to warn others. She says what happened to her can happen to anyone. And that's when I saw the bloody knife and I realized that it was a very serious situation. It all started with a Snapchat message from her friend's husband asking Bailey to help him Christmas shop for his wife. Of course, I said yes. I more than welcome to help out with people and I had to go pick them up because they only have one vehicle and she was using that one. When Bailey arrived at the house, he invited her to see the nursery for their expected baby and things took a turn for the worst. And I walked in the house, left my keys in my car, my purse in my car, window down, not locked, just wasn't going to be there very long and talked in there for maybe five minutes and as I was turning around he stabbed me. Wyatt Cunningham stabbed Bailey once in the shoulder, the head and the knee. I started to defend myself screaming, hitting, kicking and he tried to cut my throat. I blocked with one, one arm, grabbed the blade with my other hand. All the more shocking because Bailey didn't really know Cunningham. They'd only met through Jordan, her friend and his wife. I say congratulations to him at their wedding, but that was my first time meeting him, ever talking to him, and that's all I ever said to him. What's more, from court documents, he never gave a reason for stabbing her. Cunningham said he, quote, had no reason to be mad at Bailey or stab her, and that it didn't feel real. It was hard for me to understand that that, that happened to me and why that happened to me. Still don't know why that would happen to me, but... But it was real. On August 17th, Cunningham was sentenced to 15 years, eight years fixed. I definitely do feel like he needed a little more time, but the eight years is fine with me. While Cunningham is now serving his sentence, in a way, Bailey is serving one too. She lives with scars that will forever be a reminder of that day. It doesn't just all go away with uh, all the trauma that happened, but it is a little bit of a relief. Well, switching gears, a 46 year old man's body now found in Lucky Peak Reservoir just weeks after he went under the water. And the Ada County Sheriff not saying who he is, except that he went swimming around July 31st. Now, the coroner will likely identify who that is sometime this week, and we will keep you updated. Turning to developing news this morning, a key week ahead for the fight over one of Idaho's new abortion laws. The tr law triggered by the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. That's set to take effect this Thursday. We'll know as soon as tomorrow if a federal judge will stop it. The DOJ is suing Idaho, claiming its near total ban on abortions violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Now, during yesterday's arguments, Idaho Deputy Attorney General Brian Church, he was questioned about whether an ectopic pregnancy our ectopic pregnancies are included in the state's definition of pregnancy as written in the abortion ban law. Now, Church said, quote, I am bound by what the legislature has wrote. Now, that means an affirmative that doctors or nurses who treat an ectopic pregnancy, which always involves using medication or surgery to remove the embryo, could face criminal charges if a prosecutor does decide to file them. And you will recall most abortions in Idaho are already illegal. The Idaho Supreme Court said it would not put a pause on a different law, allowing relatives to sue abortion providers. Now that one took effect in August, about August 12th. And last Friday, yet another abortion ban went into effect, the so-called heartbeat law. Now it allows exceptions for medical emergencies or in cases of rape or incest. Turning now to fire season this morning, we are keeping an eye on the Four Corners fire. That's the one burning near Lake Cascade. You'll notice some more smoke in the area today. That's all because it's grown to more than 7,900 acres, sitting at 11% containment. Over the weekend, firefighters helped clear trees and some vegetation to help create a fire line, installing pumps and hoses near houses near the western edge of Lake Cascade. Now, this will help them protect those homes if the fire gets close. A reminder that people living in God's Acres and French Creek do remain evacuated this morning. You can see a full list of closures. Just head on over to our website. 
and a brush fire southeast of Boise along Interstate 84. It is contained as of this morning. Now the double tap fire. It was out near Simcoe Road and at last check it had burned about 200 acres. Now Bureau of Land Management crews are working the fire with the help of air tankers. The Ada County Sheriff's Office reports that a vehicle caught fire that quickly spread to nearby brush. Now, just a word of caution for drivers on I-84 eastbound. They could see delays in the early morning as crews are continuing to mop up. Well, happening today, Idaho's largest school district returning to the classroom. The West Ada School District set to begin their new school year. And new this year, the district will offer full day kindergarten. You can find out more information about that. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, congratulations to all the kiddos headed back to school. I think that's almost everybody headed back to class and it's looking like a great start feeling. Well, not really fall ish, but at least feeling a little bit of a breeze and hey, we yeah. will take anything we can get at this point. A little cooler. Any, you know, any break from those triple digits we saw last week, right, Sarah? So, yeah, no. um, but yeah, no, it's that nice mild conditions for this week as um, you get the kids ready for school out there. Uh, may see some haze throughout the uh, the state, depending on where you are. But for the most part, we're going to be seeing some sh sunshine, um, nice uh, highs in the 90s for today. But here's a look at that outdoor forecast as you start your day there. 81 by 11 a.m. getting into the 90s there by 3 p.m. I'm going to be reaching about 95, 96 for today. Here's some of our current temperatures right now as you're uh, getting ready to step out the door. 63 there, Nampa, Meridian there, 68, and Caldwell there, 64 degrees. 65 out in Glens Ferry and uh, out in the mountains there, McCall, 55, and Stanley there, 39. So nice, slightly cooler, a little more breezy than what we've been seeing in the early mornings over the past week. But take a look at this temperature trend over the next couple days, right? 96, 98, about 98, 99 for tomorrow. But after Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, going to see a slight cool down, possibly getting into the 80s there by the weekend. Now we are going to see some potential moisture come through the area. Um, midweek causing that uh, to cool those temperatures down a bit. But here's some of our lows for tonight. Again, staying relatively cooler there. 55 Sun Valley, 65 there Boise, 58 Mountain Homes. So nice mild conditions. And of course, continuing to monitor the smoke forecast. We are going to start to see things clear up. But of course, those fires still burning in the mountains. So some hazy conditions in the valley, Sarah. Definitely. Thank you, Marcos. And we do have air quality monitors for both Idaho and Oregon on our website if you do need them. It is 539 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, no reports of much to slow you down. Looking good in the I-84 corridor of the Treasure Valley. If you are heading eastbound near Simcoe Road, the double tap fire again. Cruz still mopping up early this morning, so just give yourself some extra couple of minutes. Other than that, you are looking good. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, it's coming up soon. It all kicks off next Wednesday, August 31st. It starts on Wednesday, which is uh, Cat Big Kids Day. And what they do that morning is the balloons actually don't leave Ann Morrison Park. Instead, the kids get to jump in the baskets and go on a tethered balloon ride with yeah, the first day, one of my favorites. That's because kids from around the Treasure Valley get to go up in balloons, safely tethered to the ground. Mom and dad, only 20 to 30 feet. And for Light 1079's morning show host, Michelle Hart, the spirit of Boise, all about celebrating what's so wonderful about our community. It's something that just brings joy to the entire community. Like, how could you be sad or unhappy when you're looking at these huge, colorful hot air balloons? You can't. That's the answer. It's going to be a lot of fun. We hope to see you there as 50 different balloons take to the skies. This year there's a tiger coming, there's a sloth, there's a rocket. Um, so it's not just the regular dome balloons that you're used to seeing. Oh, I'm excited for that sloth. All right. Well, CBS 2 News and CapEd Credit Union, as well as Town Square Media, we look forward to seeing you at Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic Labor Day weekend. We'll provide you exclusive live coverage from the event. You can watch it on CBS 2 News and IdahoNews.com. Well, folks, it's time for our question of the day. That question is 30% of people have gone here on a first date. Where is it? Marcos, my first thought, movie theater. What about you? See, my first thought was coffee. 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 Shop. Yeah. I was gonna say, yep, nope, that's a, a safe, big one. A very good safe. <laughs> 
It's always the worst though when you go on a coffee date and then you know you get there and then they say, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, or, or yeah, <laughs> or they just don't drink coffee. But they have tea. No, so. they have they have options. Yeah. yeah, not leaving anybody out. All right, let's see what folks at home say. Steven movie with theater. me, movie theater. I honestly think it's just so you don't have to talk as much. Kind of takes a little yeah. bit of that pressure off. But really, that's why you're there to date is to chat with each other. All right, Sarah says the mall. Good yeah. Good, yeah. Doing a little, you know, light walking around, maybe a little shopping while food you're doing court. that. Grab some lunch at the food yeah. court or something. No, it's a good one. All right, let's see. Diane, ooh, that's a the fun zoo. date. The zoo. Can't as, go wrong there. I was going to say, I know that Zoo Boise, you can feed the sloth bear or have a sloth bear experience. That would be a fun first date. That would. Yeah. Just putting it out there, guys. Maybe put it on your list. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, we still have about an hour and 15 minutes to guess. You can guess on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll, of course, read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Now I want to go see the penguins. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News, more extreme weather making its way across the southern U.S. We take a look at the damage being cleaned up this morning. Here's a look at your local forecast out in Jerome for today. Sunny conditions of with a high of 91, clear skies tonight with a low of 62, and tomorrow partly cloudy high of 91. Thank you, Marcos. Take a look at this. Now, parts of the south and west still reeling today after flash flooding from monsoon rains swamped communities in over six states. Now, according to the National Weather Service, the Dallas Fort Worth area, they recorded their second highest rainfall total in history. Now, it's the most in nearly 90 years. Now, CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more on how all that rain led to dramatic rescues, hundreds of them. In North Texas, the torrential rain caught people by surprise wherever they were. In Seagaville, rescuers carried children from their homes through floodwaters. And in Dallas, where 24-hour rainfall totals exceeded nine inches, a journalist pulled driver Stephanie Carroll from her submerged SUV. Oh I was just panicking because I just wanted to get, away, get out of my car and get out of the water. The area experienced the equivalent of a summer's worth of rain in just a single day. Entire neighborhoods were submerged and vehicles were swamped during the morning commute. One woman was killed when water flooded her car and swept it off a bridge. Her friends say she was an Uber driver who had just dropped off a passenger. We can't do it at this terminal. Meanwhile, a power outage at DFW Airport disrupted travelers. Hundreds of flights were delayed or canceled. It was canceled this morning and now we're back again. Further west in Duncan, Arizona, muddy floodwaters forced the evacuation of dozens of homes. And in Zion National Park, crews continue to look for a 29-year-old woman who was hiking Friday when a flash flood swept her away. Her brother told a local TV station she couldn't swim. Rangers are now expanding their search downstream. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. According to the National Weather Service, before this storm, Dallas actually hadn't recorded any measurable precipitation for 67 straight days. And that was the second longest streak that the city has ever recorded when they started doing data back in the 1880s. But thanks to this one storm, which dropped as much as three inches during one hour, it now ranks as the second wettest August on record for that city. Some pretty interesting stuff. Well, folks, let's switch gears. The Western Idaho Fair still kicking it strong. Today is the Taste Test Tuesday. That means all food vendors will serve up something on their menu for just two bucks each. Now, also happening at the fair today at noon, there is an antique tractor display, some pretty cool stuff too. At two, there's a Welsh pony driving classes and the Canine Kings. They perform at three o'clock and tonight's concert is Ja Rule and Ashanti. We have all the details posted on IdahoNews.com. Are you a fan of Ja Rule and Ashanti? Yeah, that's, that's actually where I'm going to be at tonight, Sarah. Yeah. I like that. Okay, well, if you see him, tournament. say hi, so, guys. Yeah. You can thank him for, of course, all that hot weather. Marcos, yeah. want to bring in some of that cooler weather. We're working on it, all right? Yeah. I know that we're looking at a cooler weekend heading our way, and it is actually pretty nice if you're stepping out the door this morning, but another hot day headed our way. Another, okay. uh, yeah, another hot day, but the good news is we are cooling down, as you mentioned, right? Um, a uh, nice a mild start to your day, 70 degrees, a uh, little cooler than what we've been seeing in the mornings the past couple of weeks, folks. So um, today, though, our high, we are expected to get into the um, upper mid to upper 90s. So here's a look at some of our current temperatures across um, 
the area there, 68 there, uh, Meridian, 63 Nampa, 64 out in Caldwell. So nice mild start as you're getting ready to start your day, getting the kids ready for school, 64 there, Caldwell, a little warmer there in Ontario at 77. But overall, we are going to be seeing a cool down. We may be seeing some monsoonal moisture come through the area around uh, the central part of our state around midweek this week. Uh, we are going to be seeing those temperatures cool down by the weekend into the 80s after that record uh, triple digit highs breaking the record of 2003. So here's a look at what we could expect for today. 98 there Boise, 97 Mountain Home, 97 there Nampa. So you do plan to be out at the fair, of course, take precaution, wear, wear sunscreen, stay hydrated. It is still going to be hot. So here's what to expect. A slight cool down, mountain haze, warmer than normal still, and the possibility of that midweek uh, monsoonal moisture coming through the area. 96 for tonight, sunshine sticking around all weekend, 99 for tomorrow. 96 there on Thursday and uh, that cool down beginning there 93 88 there on Saturday and 86 there Sunday uh, going to see some haze uh, the mountain region but that sunshine continuing throughout the week highs are going to be in the mid to upper 80s before they cool down by the weekend to the upper 70s Sarah. All right, thank you, Marcos. Yeah, summer still here and those temperatures hanging on. It is 549, almost oh, 550 now on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. A few more headlights, but no reports of anything to slow you down. If you are heading eastbound near Simcoe Road out heading towards Mountain Home again eastbound. We do have some crews ropping, mopping up from that double tap fire. Uh, just give yourself an extra couple of minutes. Other than that, looking good when you get in the car. Just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And coming up on CBS 2 News, taking care of culinary needs while abroad. How the travel industry is making sure food options are available to those who need it most. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 553 on your Tuesday. The cost of gas continuing to fall here in the Gem State. The average for a gallon of gas down six cents from just a week ago. Expect to pay around 464 a gallon. That is still about 75 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. You can get it there for 455 a gallon. Well, Ford Motor Company says it's cutting about 3,000 white collar jobs as part of its plans to restructure. That's as it transitions to manufacturing electric vehicles. Now, two thirds of those facing cuts will be time salaried employees and the rest contract workers. Now, by 2030, Ford says it's aiming for half of its global production to be electric vehicles. Ford CEO said in an email to workers that the company will provide severance and help find new jobs. While catering to food preferences and allergies, it's a vital part of a travel experience these days, no matter where in the world you go. Now, CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette traveled to Kruger National Park in South Africa to show how even safaris are ensuring the guests get the meals they want. This kitchen at Lion Sands Ivory Lodge in the Sabi Sands Game Reserve in Northeast South Africa is under lock and key. It's kosher with two different sets of utensils for meat and dairy. And all prepared food conforming to Jewish dietary regulations. So it's not a section in a kitchen um, that is, is kosher. It's actually a complete satellite kitchen that's fully equipped. We got a special rate to see the workings of the kitchen with Timeless Africa Safaris, which caters to kosher guests. We are a Jewish company, so the natural combination of pleasing and meeting all of our guests' needs was an easy match with having an understanding of the culture and the religion and all the diversity that it takes from being extremely kosher to kosher light. She says that enables guests to forget about food concerns and immerse themselves in what they're here for, the wildlife. We just came across this elephant. It's a male about 40 years old. Only about 5% of guests who book with Timeless Safaris are kosher, but about 95% have some sort of dietary request. For travel advisor Jim Bent, journeys used to be challenging for his family after his son Andrew was diagnosed with celiac disease 17 years ago. 
we used to have a suitcase and we would pack it full of gluten-free food that you couldn't buy at the market because it just wasn't available in packaged goods. So we actually made all this food and traveled the world. He offers a few tips for travelers with dietary needs. Let the hotel know in advance what you require. Meet with the chef if you're in a remote location and try to get the same waiter at meals. Today, it's a lot easier to manage traveling and dietary uh, preferences that are out there. So all you need to worry about digesting is the view. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Kruger National Park, South Africa. Well, a recent survey from Statista, they finds that more than four in 10 Americans now follow some dietary rule. Other surveys show the figure is as high as six in 10 Americans. Well, NASA says its giant moon rocket is a go for launch as of next week. Now, the Artemis 1 rocket has passed its flight readiness review. NASA targeting a two hour launch window next Monday, the 29th to send that rocket into orbit. Now that launch will be an uncrewed test flight and the mission will prepare the way for Artemis 2, which is set to carry astronauts on flyby on a flyby of the moon. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more kids headed back to the classroom today. What's new for Idaho's largest school district? And lawyers for the former president asking for more time as the FBI reviews documents taken from Mar-a-Lago. You're watching CBS News this morning, your local news and weather. They continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll have your latest headlines at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a stabbing victim speaking out why she's warning others to be alert. Plus, a federal judge set to deliver a verdict on one of Idaho's abortion bans. How soon we'll know whether or not it will go into effect. Plus, the Four Corners fire continuing to burn. What you may see more of across the skies today as crews battle the blaze. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise on this Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Well, hey, we're feeling a little bit of a breeze as we're stepping out the door this morning, helping cool us by a good 10 degrees. I'm loving the feeling out there, Marcos. And we know a cool down heading our way this weekend. Tell us more. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. That's right. It is a nice little breeze out there, a little cooler this morning as you start your day. But uh, we are going to be seeing a cool down in store this week. However, still warmer than normal for this time of year. Here's that uh, live look right now. 68 degrees, so a little cooler. Southeast winds there, 9 miles an hour. Feels like 66, 68 out there. And here's a look at some temperatures across the valley. 64 there, Caldwell. Um, Idaho City there 49, Ontario there 72, and Mountain Home there 65 degrees. Now, here's our normal for this time of year, 89, right? Normal low, 59. Uh, on, we, we are expected to get into those upper to mid 90s still for today, so we're not uh, quite out of the woods yet. There's 98 there, Boise, 98 there, Emmett, 97 there, Mountain Home. And so uh, what to expect over the next few days, slight cool down, that mountain haze sticking around warmer than normal still, and the possibility of moisture this week. Sarah? Hey, we will take what we can get. Thank you, Marco. 601 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring a team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Traffic flowing good out there. It looks like we have no reports of anything to slow you down. So I hope you all are having a great morning. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, 20 year old Wyatt Cunningham, he'll spend 15 years in prison for stabbing a woman multiple times. Now, though their trial is over, the woman who was stabbed, she sat down with CBS 2's Michaela Elich to warn others. She says what happened to her can happen to anyone. And that's when I saw the bloody knife and I realized that it was a very serious situation. It all started with a Snapchat message from her friend's husband. 
asking Bailey to help him Christmas shop for his wife. Of course I've said yes, I'm more than welcome to help out with people and I had to go pick them up because they only have one vehicle and she was using that one. When Bailey arrived at the house, he invited her to see the nursery for their expected baby and things took a turn for the worst. And I walked in the house, left my keys in my car, my purse in my car, window down, not locked, just wasn't going to be there very long and talked in there for maybe five minutes and as I was turning around he stabbed me. Wyatt Cunningham stabbed Bailey once in the shoulder, the head and the knee. I started to defend myself screaming, hitting, kicking and he tried to cut my throat. I blocked with one, ar one arm, grabbed the blade with my other hand. All the more shocking because Bailey didn't really know Cunningham. They'd only met through Jordan, her friend and his wife. I say congratulations to him at their wedding, but that was my first time meeting him, ever talking to him, and that's all I ever said to him. What's more, from court documents, he never gave a reason for stabbing her. Cunningham said he, quote, had no reason to be mad at Bailey or stab her, and that it didn't feel real. It was hard for me to understand that that, that happened to me and why that happened to me. Still don't know why that would happen to me, but... But it was real. On August 17th, Cunningham was sentenced to 15 years, eight years fixed. I definitely do feel like he needed a little more time, but the eight years is fine with me. While Cunningham is now serving his sentence, in a way, Bailey is serving one too. She lives with scars that will forever be a reminder of that day. It doesn't just all go away with uh, all the trauma that had happened, but it is a little bit of a relief. Well, I'm so happy to know that she is okay. Well, switching gears, a 46-year-old man's body now found in Lucky Peak Reservoir weeks after he went under. Now, the Ada County Sheriff not saying who that man is, except that he went swimming back on July 31st. The coroner will likely identify who it is sometime later this week, and we will keep you updated. Turning to developing news, it is a key week ahead in the fight over one of Idaho's new abortion laws. Now, the law triggered by the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, it's set to take effect this Thursday. Now, we'll know as soon as tomorrow if a federal judge will stop it. The DOJ is suing Idaho, claiming its near total ban on abortion violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Now, during yesterday's arguments, Idaho Deputy Attorney General Brian Church was questioned about whether ectopic pregnancies are included in the state's definition of pregnancy as written in the abortion ban law. Now, Church said, quote, I am bound by what the legislature has wrote. Now, that means an affirmative that doctors or nurses who treat an ectopic pregnancy, which always involves using medication or surgery to remove that embryo, hopefully before other organs are damaged, they could face criminal charges if a prosecutor decided to file them. And you will recall most abortions in Idaho are already illegal. The Idaho Supreme Court said it would not put a pause on a different law, allowing relatives to sue abortion providers. Now that one took effect back on August 12th and last Friday, yet another abortion ban went into effect. That's the so-called heartbeat law. Now it does allow exceptions for medical emergencies in cases of rape or incest. Now let's switch gears to fire season. We're keeping a close eye on the Four Corners fire that's burning near Lake Cascade. You'll notice a little bit more smoke moving through today. That's because it's grown to more than 7,900 acres at 11% containment. Over the weekend, firefighters helped clear some trees and vegetation, cutting a fire line and installing pumps and hoses near homes on the western edge of Lake Cascade. This will help protect if those fire if that fire gets too close to homes. People living in the God's Creek and French Creek remain evacuated as of this morning. You can see a full list of closures in the area. Just head to our website. And a brush fire southeast of Boise along Interstate 84. It's contained as of this morning. The double tap fire. It was out near Simcoe Road. At last check, it burned about 200 acres. Now, Bureau of Land Management crews, they're working the fire with help of air tankers. The Ada County Sheriff's Office reports a vehicle caught fire and quickly spread to a nearby brush in the area. Just a caution for drivers heading on I-84 eastbound. They could see delays in the area early this morning as crews are continuing to mop up. Well, happening today, Idaho's largest school district returning to the classroom. The West Ada School District set to begin their new school year. And just new this year, the district now offering full-day kindergarten. 
If you're interested, you can find more information. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, a big congrats to all the kiddos heading back for, of course, the school year, fall semester, kicking it off. A little bit cooler conditions today. So as they're stepping out the door this morning, I mean, it's still very mild overall. Still sitting on a summer evening, moving into a summer day. So it's going to be hot. Uh, looking pretty nice this morning, though. Yeah, still hot this afternoon, right? So, uh, but of course, this morning, a uh, nice and mild start to the day. Um, and uh, we're actually going to see temperatures cool down a bit over the next couple days. Going to get to more normal uh, mid to late August, right? That uh, sort of the beginning of fall kind of moving into September but here's a look at that out the door forecast for your morning uh, going to be warming up into the 70s there by 9 a.m. 80s there by 11 a.m. I'm going to be getting as I said into those mid to upper 90s there possibly 96 there by this afternoon so uh, keep that in mind if you're going to be getting out there to the fair today or going to be getting out there um, doing some outdoor things. So here's those current temperatures, 69 there, Meridian, CUNA uh, 59 there, Caldwell there, 64. And taking a look at Mountain Home there, 63. And then out in the mountain region, mid 50s, 39 there, Stanley. So a uh, nice uh, mild start to the day. But there's that cool down I talked about, 98 there Wednesday, 96 Thursday, Friday there, 93. And getting into those more normal ranges for this time of year, by Saturday, folks. So here's a look at those lows for uh, overnight lows as well, right? 58 there, Mountain Home, 64 Boise, and 55 out in Stanley. Smoke uh, smoke forecast. I'm going to keep an eye on this uh, as we see uh, those uh, fires out in the mountain region. We are expected to uh, see that haze uh, mellow out over the next couple days, but. Of course, we're still going to keep an eye on it. Most of that in the mountain region as those cool temperatures arrive this week, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 609 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? Well, good morning. Uh, doing fine. We're starting off uh, pretty quiet all the way around. Maybe a little moderate volume, 84, but uh, speeds have not been bad yet. Too early, really, for uh, consistent uh, traffic coming on at the freeway at interchanges, which can cause those merge slow spots. So none of that going. And in general, elsewhere, even away from the freeways, it's quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. I love to hear it. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, the countdown is on for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. It kicks off next Wednesday, August 31st. It starts on Wednesday, which is uh, Cap Egg Kids Day. And what they do that morning is the balloons actually don't leave Anna Morrison Park. Instead, the kids get to jump in the baskets and go on a tethered balloon ride with yeah, one of my favorite days, Cap Ed Kids Day, where kids get to go up on balloons safely tethered to the ground, only about 20 or 30 feet. But for Light 1079's morning show host, Michelle Hart, the spirit of Boise, all about celebrating what's so wonderful about our community. It's something that just brings joy to the entire community. Like, how could you be sad or unhappy when you're looking at these huge, colorful hot air balloons? You can't. That's the answer. It is going to be so much fun as 50 balloons are set to take to the skies. This year there's a tagger coming, there's a sloth, there's a rocket. Um, so it's not just the regular dome balloons that you're used to seeing. A sloth. Ooh, I'm excited for that one. All right. CBS2, CapEd Credit Union and Town Square Media, we all look forward to seeing you at Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic Labor Day weekend. We'll provide you with exclusive live coverage from the event. You can also watch it live on CBS2 or IdahoNews.com. Can't wait. Well, straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, lawyers for the former president asking for more time as the FBI reviews documents taken from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Plus, staying safe out on the roads, what you need to know if you're planning to ride your bike right here in the Gem State. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's look at yesterday's question. Despite the economy, spending on this continues to climb every year. Last year, we spent $109.6 billion on it. That answer? our pets. Of course, there are little fur babies. Now for today's question, 30% of people have gone here on a first date. All right, folks, where do you think it is?
Here's that local weather for you out in Burns today. Sunny conditions with a high of 92 tonight. Those clear skies kicking in and tomorrow that sunshine continuing with a high of 93. Thank you, Marcos. Well, lawyers for former President Trump asking for a timeout in the FBI's review of documents recovered from his Florida estate. That's until a neutral third party would be appointed to inspect those records. Now it comes as the New York Times reports that the government recovered more than 300 documents marked as classified from the estate since Trump left office. Now CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn has the latest from New York. In a new court filing, lawyers for former President Donald Trump are asking a judge to block the FBI from looking at the materials seized in the Mar-a-Lago search until a neutral third party can be appointed to oversee the review. The so-called special master the Trump legal team is calling for would take on the responsibility of setting aside documents covered by executive privilege. We're going to come out swinging and say, look, you know, this cannot be something where we just get a uh, that kind of a wink and a nod from DOJ that we're supposed to trust them. Monday's maneuver is part of a federal lawsuit filed by the former president's legal team in response to the hours long search of his Palm Beach estate two weeks ago. It could give him a little more comfort. It could keep his side of things in the news. So I think in terms of the rhetoric around it, the politics behind it, it might help Donald Trump. The day of the search, agents seized boxes, including 11 sets of classified documents, some marked top secret. This all comes as the Justice Department faces a Thursday deadline to submit a redacted version of the affidavit that led to the search warrant. They have to go through it not only sentence by sentence and paragraph by paragraph, but word by word, because every redaction they make, if they don't redact completely, it's going to lead people to speculate. The Justice Department opposes the release of the affidavit, saying it could compromise the investigation. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. The motion that former President Trump's legal team filed Monday, that also includes a claim that he's the front runner for the 2024 Republican nomination. Now that highlights how politics is making its way into the ongoing investigations surrounding Trump. Well, looking ahead, Idaho has an election coming up. That's on August 30th for several school districts who will have bonds and levies on the ballot. Now, early voting ends as of this Friday. The deadline to request an absentee ballot has already passed. So if you didn't apply for one, you will need to vote in person. And if you did get an absentee ballot, just remember it's got to be returned in by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Again, that's August 30th. Yeah, just want to remind folks that is a new law. I want to make sure you get it in in time. But hey, Kids heading back to school today as they're heading out the door this morning, feeling a nice little breeze moving through the region. It's actually feeling pretty nice, about a 10 degree cool down from yeah, yesterday. Yeah, no, it was a Not nice bad. breeze walking in, uh, getting up for work this morning too. But uh, we are expected to get warm for today again, again, folks, but we are gonna be cooling down this week. Uh, start to get down into the upper 80s by this weekend. So if you need a break or some relief from that uh, triple digit, that hot weather we've been seeing, this is going to be the weekend. Here's a live look right now. 68 southeast winds there at nine miles an hour. Uh, looking at some of our current temperatures right now as we're getting ready to get to work or get the kids off to school there. Uh, mid uh, 64 there Caldwell, 61 Nampa, 69 there Meridian and uh, 61 out in Mountain Home and 60 there in Glens Ferry. So nice mild. A uh, nice little breezy condition this morning as we're getting ready to start our day. As Sarah mentioned, we are going to be staying fairly dry until about the midweek uh, Wednesday, Thursday. We may see some moisture come through the, air, the our area to the central region of the state and uh, may provide some of that cool down. But until then, here's what we could expect for tonight. 99 there out in Emmett, uh, mid to upper 90s throughout the, the region. Really there 97 Caldwell, 97 Mountain Home and 97 out in Nampa. So quick breakdown of what to expect. A slight cool down, mountain haze still around from those fires, warmer than normal and moisture midweek. So here's a look at that extended forecast. Sunshine throughout the week, 96 there today, 99 there Wednesday, and then uh, gonna stick around the mid to uh, mid eight, mid nineties throughout the weekend until we get to the actual weekend and we see the mid to upper 80s and then a quick look at the extended mountain forecast sunshine those hazy conditions but again mid 80s throughout the week Sarah 
No, thank you, Marcos. It is 620 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there this morning? Hi there. Good morning. Doing fine. It is still pretty quiet. Light to uh, maybe a little moderate volume I-84, but don't have the uh, slowdowns kicking in quite yet uh, through Meridian, for example. And uh, things quiet, uh, even major routes away from the freeways. The work continues Highway 2026 at Highway 16. Lane restrictions in place there, but no buildup this time of the morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Wyan. Hey, looking good. Thank you so much, Ron. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn the dial to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And before we go to break, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello, Idaho. Corporal Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday. You know, I've talked a little bit before about red lights and stop signs for vehicles. Well, I want to take a minute to talk about red lights and stop signs for bicycles because the rules apply a little bit differently on bikes than they do for vehicles on the roadway. So what does it mean for bikes? Well, ultimately, a stop sign for a bicyclist is the same or should be treated the same as a yield sign for a vehicle. So that means as a bicyclist comes up to an intersection and they see that stop sign there, they're required to slow down and then yield to any cross traffic on the road, but they are not required to stop. Now a red light is a little bit different for a bicyclist. It's actually treated like a stop sign would be for a vehicle. So a bicyclist is required to stop at a red light and then if the intersection is clear, they can go ahead and proceed through a red light after coming to a complete stop. Now, the same rule would apply as far as we want you as a bicyclist to get to where you're going safely. That means you do have to yield, whether it's through a stop sign or a red light, to any vehicles on the road that can legally go the opposite direction. So make sure it's clear whether you're just slowing down through a stop sign or you're stopping and proceeding through a red light make sure that roadway is clear for you to go ahead and proceed so you can get to where you're going safely and as drivers be sure we're watching out for those bicycles as well as cars on the road so hopefully that helps with traffic tip tuesday this week buckle up buckaroo you heard it here first still to come on cbs 2 news this morning how our diet may help you deal with the impact of long covid Plus the Western Idaho Fair, it's on the special deal today that may help you get your hands on some of that iconic fair food. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 625. Welcome back. A new study shows your diet may make a difference in whether or not you struggle with lingering symptoms of coronavirus. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains why. Hey there, everybody. While no one diet can prevent or treat any viral complication, new research does show one eating plan may work against some of the common problems associated with COVID-19 complications. That diet is the Mediterranean diet. It appears it may reduce the risk of developing lingering symptoms of COVID-19. Even though providers acknowledge we aren't sure yet how to treat this collection of symptoms known as long COVID syndrome. Sometimes because we, we don't have great treatments, the most important thing that, that I provide is a follow-up appointment. We'll see you in two weeks. Um, we'll see how you're doing. The Mediterranean diet generally includes more plant-based proteins, such as nuts and beans or legumes, olive oil as the primary source of fat, lots of fruits and vegetables, and dairy foods, eggs, chicken, and fish in moderate amounts. Researchers speculate it may work against long COVID in this new study, not yet peer-reviewed or published, because eating this way works against high cholesterol or patterns of blood fats associated with long COVID and also heart disease. It may also be because the diet works like a statin in the body, a drug already known to alter levels of fat and cholesterol in the body. Best way to start this eating plan, try just one meatless meal a week. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Pfizer submitting an updated coronavirus vaccine for regulatory approval. The company says the shots have been revised to specifically target new strains of the Omicron variant. The FDA hopes to improve, approve the new vaccine before winter, just in time for a booster dose campaign. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more kids headed back to the classroom today. What's new for Idaho's largest school district? And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. 
We have a three hour block of FBI. Then you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a stabbing victim speaking out why she's warning others to be alert. Plus, a federal judge set to deliver a verdict on one of Idaho's abortion bans. How soon we'll know whether or not it will go into effect. Plus, the Four Corners fire continuing to burn. What you may see more of across the skies today as crews battle the blaze. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, folks. We are going to be seeing a cool down this week, but today we are going to continue with those mid to upper 90 highs. Here's a look right now. Live shot downtown there, 68 degrees southeast winds at nine miles an hour. Taking a look at some temperatures across the valley there, 64 there, Caldwell, Ontario there, 72 and Mountain Home there, 65 degrees. So a nice mild start as you get ready to start your day. Here's our normal for this time of year, right? 89 degrees, uh, normal low there, 59 degrees. But here's a look at what we could expect for today. 97 there, Mountain Home, 97 there, Nampa, 98 Boise, and 99 out in Emmett. So still gonna be seeing those hot, uh, near triple digit highs, but staying underneath those triple digits. But Still going to stay pretty warm, folks. Here's a look at what we could expect over the next couple days. Slight cool down that are warmer than normal. Uh, mountain haze continuing to uh, stick around the valley and the possibility of some moisture midweek cooling down our temperatures. And we're going to start to see those uh, highs get into the upper 80s by this weekend. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 631 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. A few more headlights. We are expecting a little more congestion as we head into the 7 o'clock hour, but nothing to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, 20 year old Wyatt Cunningham, he'll spend 15 years in prison for stabbing a woman multiple times. And even though the trial is over, the woman who was stabbed sat down with CBS 2's Michaela Elich to warn others. She says what happened to her can happen to anyone. That's when I saw the bloody knife and I realized that it was a very serious situation. It all started with a Snapchat message from her friend's husband asking Bailey to help him Christmas shop for his wife. Of course, I've said yes. I've more than welcome to help out with people. And I had to go pick them up because they only have one vehicle and she was using that one. When Bailey arrived at the house, he invited her to see the nursery for their expected baby. And things took a turn for the worst. And I walked in the house, left my keys in my car, my purse in my car, window down, not locked, just wasn't gonna be there very long and talked in there for maybe five minutes and as I was turning around he stabbed me. Wyatt Cunningham stabbed Bailey once in the shoulder, the head and the knee. I started to defend myself screaming, hitting, kicking and he tried to cut my throat. I blocked with one, one arm, grabbed the blade with my other hand. All the more shocking because Bailey didn't really know Cunningham. They'd only met through Jordan, her friend and his wife. I say congratulations to him at their wedding, but that was my first time meeting him, ever talking to him, and that's all I ever said to him. What's more, from court documents, he never gave a reason for stabbing her. Cunningham said he, quote, had no reason to be mad at Bailey or stab her, and that it didn't feel real. It was hard for me to understand that that, that happened to me and why that happened to me. Still don't know why that would happen to me, but... But it was real. On August 17th, Cunningham was sentenced to 15 years, eight years fixed. I definitely do feel like he needed a little more time, but the eight years is fine with me. While Cunningham is now serving his sentence, in a way, Bailey is serving one too. She lives with scars that will forever be a reminder of that day. It doesn't just all go away with uh, all the trauma that happened, but it is a little bit of a relief. Switching gears, a 46-year-old man's body now found in Lucky Peak Reservoir just weeks after he went under. 
The Ada County Sheriff not saying who he is, except that he went swimming back on July 31st. Now, the coroner will likely identify who it is sometime later on this week, and we will keep you updated. Turning to developing news, it is a key week in the fight over one of Idaho's new abortion laws. The trigger law or the law triggered by Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade that's set to take effect this Thursday. We'll know as soon as tomorrow if a federal judge will stop it. The DOJ is suing Idaho, claiming its near total ban on abortion violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Now, during yesterday's arguments, Idaho Deputy Attorney General Brian Church, he was questioned about whether an ectopic pregnancies are actually included in the state's definition of a pregnancy. That's as written in the abortion ban law. Now, Church said, quote, I am bound by what the legislature has wrote. And that means an affirmative that doctors or nurses who treat an ectopic pregnancy, which always involves using medication or surgery to remove that embryo, could face criminal charges if a prosecutor did decide to file them. Well, switching gears to fire season this morning, we're keeping a close eye on the Four Corners fire that's burning near Cascade. You'll notice a little more smoke around the area today. That's because it's grown to more than 7,900 acres and is 11% contained. Over the weekend, firefighters, they cleared trees and vegetation, helping cut a fire line and install pumps near homes on the western edge of Lake Cascade. Now, this will help them protect homes if the fire gets close enough. People living in the God's Acres and French Creek area, they remain evacuated this morning. You can see the closures in the area. Just head on over to our website. And a brush fire southeast of Boise along Interstate 84. It's contained as of this morning. The double tap fire was out near Simcoe Road and at last check it burned around 200 acres. Now Bureau of Land Management crews, they're working with fire. Or they're working the fire with help of air tankers. The Ada County Sheriff's Office, they report that a vehicle caught fire and quickly spread to nearby brush. Now caution to drivers on I-84 eastbound. They could see delays early this morning as crews are mopping up. Well, happening today, Idaho's largest school district returning to the classroom. The West Ada School District set to begin their new school year as of this morning. And new this year, the district offering free full day kindergarten. If you're interested, you can find out more information. We do have that on our website, IdahoNews.com. Very exciting kids heading back to the classroom today. I know many people excited for a little bit of a cool down on the way. Just a lot of fun stuff going on, especially the Western Idaho Fair, too. If you're going to be out there, as you said earlier, make sure you wear sunscreen. Stay hydrated. Uh, yeah, you know, stay hydrated, uh, wear sunscreen. We still are in the dog days of summer. It's toasty out there, but some relief is headed our way. Some relief, yeah, relief is coming. Uh, nice uh, cool down that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of days. Uh, today, though, not that day. We are expected to get into the mid to upper 90s uh, until about the end of the week. That's where we'll start seeing some of that relief and uh, start getting into the more normal highs for this time of year. But here's a look at that out the door forecast as you get ready for your day, getting into the 80s there by 11 a.m., 88 there by 1 p.m., and there's those 90 degree temperatures as we go on about the day. So nice, uh, mild conditions this morning in the 60s, 61 there Nampa, 69 there Meridian, and uh, 61 there Mountain Home, Nampa there at 61, and Glens Ferry there at 63 as well. But here's a look at that temperature trend over the next couple days, 96 for today, 98 on Wednesday, and then you see there 96, 93, and then 88 by Saturday. More of our normal temperatures for this time of year are in the upper 80s, but so we're going to be get cooling down into that into those uh, temperatures as the week comes to an end. So low temperatures for throughout the night, 55 there Sun Valley, 64 there Boise, and 58 there out in Mountain Home. Now we are going to continue to monitor the smoke forecast there. We should be clearing things out a little bit, but most of that going to be affecting the mountain region where most of those fires are. But overall, still warm today, Sarah. No, thank you, Marcos. Keeping our eyes on the skies. We do have air quality monitors as well on our website if you're interested. It is 639 CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a look at what's happening on the roads. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking?
Good morning. Volume a little on the increase. Uh, I-84, there's uh, been a little bit of crowding. A spot or two mainly in Meridian, merge areas. That'll begin to kick in a little bit more so, especially next hour. And first day of uh, schools for the West Ada School District. I believe that pretty much gets all schools in the Treasure Valley back underway after uh, other schools and districts got going the last few weeks. So keep that in mind. School buses out and about even more so, and especially West Ada. And uh, kids getting to and from school. This is time of year from the news talk kboi traffic studio i'm ronald bryan yes it is looking like a few more cars out on the road so when you do get in the car just make sure you turn on news talk kboi that is 670 a.m or 93.1 fm for all our team traffic updates well the spirit of boise balloon classic coming up soon it kicks off next wednesday august 31st it starts on Wednesday, which is uh, Cap Egg Kids Day. And what they do that morning is the balloons actually don't leave Ann Morrison Park. Instead, the kids get to jump in the baskets and go on a tethered balloon ride. With the first day, always fun as we get to see kids go up in balloons, of course, safely tethered to the ground. For Light 1079's morning show host, Michelle Hard, the Spirit of Boise, all about celebrating what's so wonderful about our community. It's something that just brings joy to the entire community. Like, how could you be sad or unhappy when you're looking at these huge, colorful, hot air balloons? Yeah, Michelle says in addition to the people, she's excited to see some of the uniquely shaped balloons. This year, there's a tagger coming, there's a sloth, there's a rocket. Um, so it's not just the regular dome balloons that you're used to seeing. I'm excited for that sloth. All right. CBS2, Cap Ed Credit Union, and Town Square Media, we all look forward to seeing you at Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. That's Labor Day weekend. We'll provide you exclusive live coverage from the event. You can also watch it live on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. Don't want to miss it. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is 30% of people have gone here on a first date. All right. Where do we think it is? Marcos. I'm going to say your favorite lunch spot. Your favorite lunch spot? Yeah, your favorite, yeah, your favorite yeah, restaurant. Yeah, I was going to say, right? my favorite is Ottavola. Shout out. Yeah. Sit just right down the street <laughs> from here, actually. All right, Karen says miniature golf. Yeah, a little bit of putt-putt. It's nice because then, you know, you can, you can show off a little bit of skill, not really give it all to them at that moment. It's a fun day, too. <laughs> all right, Deb says bowling. Yeah, do you, do you keep the bumpers yeah. up, Marcos? Just, just be real with me. Yes. You do? Yeah. I do too. Okay, good. I'm happy we can, we can be honest with one another. Yeah. Hey, and this week too, if you want to get a first date the out fair. west, saying the fair. Nothing more romantic than the Ferris wheel. I actually kind of love that idea. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm not alone out there. I like that, Wes. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, still 15 minutes to get in your answer. Again, on our Facebook page or our Twitter. And we'll reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, more extreme weather making its way across the southern U.S. A look at the damage being cleaned up this morning. Here's a look at your Jerome forecast. Sunny conditions today with a high of 91. Clear skies tonight with a low of 62. And tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high of 91. We'll take a look at this. Parts of the south and west still reeling today after flash flooding from monsoon rains. Swamp communities in over six states. Now, according to the National Weather Service, the Dallas Fort Worth area, they recorded their second highest rainfall total in its history in almost 90 years. Now, CBS's Brackley Blackburn has more on how all that rain led to hundreds of dramatic rescues. In North Texas, the torrential rain caught people by surprise wherever they were. In Seagaville, rescuers carried children from their homes through floodwaters. And in Dallas, where 24-hour rainfall totals exceeded 9 inches, a journalist pulled driver Stephanie Carroll from her submerged SUV. Oh I was just panicking because I just wanted to get, away, get out of my car and get out of the water. The area experienced the equivalent of a summer's worth of rain in just a single day. Entire neighborhoods were submerged and vehicles were swamped during the morning commute. One woman was killed when water flooded her car and swept it off a bridge. Her friends say she was an Uber driver who had just dropped off a passenger. We can't do it at this terminal. Meanwhile, a power outage at DFW Airport disrupted travelers. Hundreds of flights were delayed or canceled. It was canceled this morning and now we're back again. 
Further west, in Duncan, Arizona, muddy floodwaters forced the evacuation of dozens of homes. And in Zion National Park, crews continue to look for a 29-year-old woman who was hiking Friday when a flash flood swept her away. Her brother told a local TV station she couldn't swim. Rangers are now expanding their search downstream. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Well, the Western Idaho Fair is still going on. Today, it's Taste Test Tuesday. Now, all food vendors, they'll serve up something on their menu for only two bucks. Now, also happening at the fair today at noon, we have an antique tractor display. At two, the Welsh Pony driving classes and the Canine Kings. They perform at three o'clock. Today's concert also is Ja Rule and Ashanti. We have all those details posted. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. I've had Ja Rule and Ashanti stuck in my head all morning. I'm not going to subject you to my singing, guys, <laughs> but very excited for that tonight. And you're expected to, you're going to be heading out there, correct? I'll be headed out there, yeah. yeah. I'm a, a big uh, Ashanti fan, so yeah. a Ja Rule fan as well. So Make sure to stay, yeah. yeah, say hi to Marcos if you see him. And also make sure you're wearing sunscreen. Yeah, yeah bring some water with you. It's, it's still going to be, be warm. So it's still going to be hot out tonight. So yeah. I think uh, we're expected a high of 97 for tonight. 90, 96, 97, but here's a look at our live uh, temperature right now. 68 southeast winds there, nine miles an hour. Feels like 68 out there. And taking a look at some of our current temperatures, 69 there, Meridian, Nampa there, 61, and Caldwell there, 64. So it's going to be a nice uh, mild start to your days. You're getting the kids ready for school. There's uh, 72 out in Ontario, a little uh, warmer there. But looking at our satellite and radar, we are going to stay dry for the most part. We may see some moisture come through the area around the central part of our state later this week, causing some of our temperatures to go down just a bit. Um, looking at what to expect for today, though, 98 there, Boise, 97 there, Mountain Home. Again, if you're going to be out and about today, the fair, wear that sunscreen, stay hydrated. Uh, it's still pretty warm out there, folks. 97 there, Caldwell, 99 there, Emmett, and McCall there at 86 degrees. So quick rundown of what to expect. A slight cool down this week. Mountain haze still around. Warmer than normal still though and moisture around midweek. So here's a look at that extended forecast. Sunny with a high of 96 for today. 99 on Wednesday. That sunshine continuing 96 there. 93 by Friday and then we start to see that cool down Saturday 88. 86 there Sunday, but that sunshine sticking around. Sarah. No, oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 649 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring your team traffic all morning long. Let's get a last check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking? Good morning. Volume uh, continues to uh, increase at times, kind of comes and goes a little bit at the uh, merge areas, but there has been a little crowding. Nothing major going, that's for sure. But uh, keep in mind, more and more schools getting underway as of today, West Ada School District. So something to uh, keep in mind, especially around area school zones. And next hour, 7 o'clock hours, when things will really begin to build more so uh, away from the freeways and specifically around school zones. Kids getting dropped off, school buses out and about. So watch out. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, taking care of culinary needs while abroad. How the travel industry is making sure food options are available to those who need them. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.53. The cost of gas continuing to fall in the Gem State. Now the average for a gallon of gas down just six cents from a week ago. You can expect to pay around 4.60 for a gallon. That is still about 75 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. You can get it for about 4.55 a gallon there. Ford Motor Company says it's cutting about 3,000 white collar jobs as part of a plan to restructure. That's as it transitions to manufacturing electric vehicles. Now, two thirds of those facing cuts will be full time salaried employees. The rest will be contract workers. Now, by 2030, Ford says it's aiming for half of its global production to be electric vehicles. 
Ford CEO said in an email to workers that the company will provide severance and help finding new jobs. Well, catering to food preferences and allergies, it's a vital part of a travel experience these days, no matter where you go in the world. And CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette, she traveled to Kruger National Park in South Africa to show how even safaris ensure that guests get the meals that they want. This kitchen at Lion Sands Ivory Lodge in the Sabi Sands Game Reserve in Northeast South Africa is under lock and key. It's kosher with two different sets of utensils for meat and dairy. And all prepared food conforming to Jewish dietary regulations. So it's not a section in a kitchen um, that is, is kosher. It's actually a complete satellite kitchen that's fully equipped. We got a special rate to see the workings of the kitchen with Timeless Africa Safaris, which caters to kosher guests. We are a Jewish company, so the natural combination of pleasing and meeting all of our guests' needs was an easy match with having an understanding of the culture and the religion and all the diversity that it takes from being extremely kosher to kosher light. She says that enables guests to forget about food concerns and immerse themselves in what they're here for, the wildlife. We just came across this elephant. It's a male about 40 years old. Only about 5% of guests who book with Timeless Safaris are kosher, but about 95% have some sort of dietary request. For travel advisor Jim Bent, journeys used to be challenging for his family after his son Andrew was diagnosed with celiac disease 17 years ago. We used to have a suitcase and we would pack it full of gluten-free food that you couldn't buy at the market because it just wasn't available in packaged goods. So we actually made all this food and traveled the world. He offers a few tips for travelers with dietary needs. Let the hotel know in advance what you require. Meet with a chef if you're in a remote location and try to get the same waiter at meals. Today, it's a lot easier to manage traveling and dietary uh, preferences that are out there. So all you need to worry about digesting is the view. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Kruger National Park, South Africa. Well, NASA says its giant moon rocket is a go for launch as of next week. Now, the Artemis One rocket, it's passed its flight readiness review. Now, NASA is targeting a two-hour launch window as of next Monday, the 29th, to send that rocket into orbit. Now, that launch will be an uncrewed test flight, and the mission will prepare the way for Artemis II, which will carry astronauts on a flyby of the moon. All right, well, it's time for our question of the day. About 30% of people, they've gone here on a first date. That answer, Marcos? An amusement park. Oh! Okay. Pretty so, fun, a little little up down. Fair, fair is pretty close. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Have a great rest of your morning. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS2 today at 11. Connect with CBS2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.